It's the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to take you through the pages of our national dailies and we call it Off the Press. And as always, we have a Zika Onyai. Toku joins the conversation. The essence is he takes us through analyzing some of the top stories on the papers this morning. It's good to have you join us, Zika Onyai. Toku, good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you on Plus TV Africa. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper. And, and looking at the Daily Independent, of course, the focus would always be on uh, top stories. And uh, the banner caption is what we start off with always. Federal government to increase borrowing to fund 3 trillion naira 18-month subsidy bill. That's what the Daily Independent says. To ask NAS for amendment to fiscal framework 2022 budget. Amend PIA to accommodate 18-month subsidy from six months. That's a rider underneath the bold caption. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, and you also have 2022 BC Kola Wale wins AKT PDP Guba primaries. And you have 183,000 APC members to elect Guba candidate today. Court declares deductions from federal accounts for police trust fund unconstitutional. Orders federal government to refund River State. And Nigeria records 26 Lassa fever deaths, 115 cases this year. Shonwo Lu flags off road projects to link um, Ojota Link Bridge. And you also have uh, APC not zoned presidential tickets. Orders says Buni. 2023 elections will push away foreign portfolios investors. And Constitution Review reps seek creation of 111 additional NAS seats for women. Well, it comes at a time where we're talking about the cost of running governance. I mean, the cost, yes. the, the fact that the national, we're spending so much with our legislatures and we're thinking about 11 more additional NAS seats. Well, that's well, that, 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 that's, that's interesting. Let's move straight to the leadership newspaper with these um, headlines. Um, the leading headline there, uh, fuel subsidy, of course, taking the attention yet again. It's uh, probably been about three days since uh, the papers have been paying attention to this. Heat turns on NNPC as governor's NLC query consumption figures. And if you remember, um, sometime last week, the uh, Senate President Ahmed Laman, who went to see President Buhari and was the first to announce that uh, um, the president was not in support of removal of fuel subsidy, was questioning the daily consumption of petrol in Nigeria. It's hovering between 70 to 72 million a trillion tri uh, a barrel, uh, a liters a day and sometimes it's gonna as high as 100 million liters a day um, so this is an interesting uh, headline fuel subsidy heat turns on NNPC as uh, governor's NLC query consumption figures the following writers to that headline governors want 411 naira pump price say three three trillion naira subsidy not sensible another writer to that headline federal government has wasted 10 billion dollars on refineries rehabilitation labor it's worrying times as far as that sector is concerned. Another headline on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Court stops FG's deductions from Federation account to fund its own agencies. Uh, we have Olu of Worry meets PMB over NDDC's board for ports. 2023, stop endorsing aspirants, ACF warns members. 2023, stop endorsing aspirants, ACF warns members. Gan Duje, Shekarao Field, Buni leads APC reconciliation team. Gan Duje, Shekarao Field, APC leads, Buni leads APC reconciliation team. That's story talking about uh, the former and present governors of Kano State as far as the leadership tussle for the APC in that state is concerned. At the top of the front page of the leadership newspaper, FG reverses EFCC NFIU's retention of 10% of recovered loot. FG reverses EFCC NFIU's retention of 10% of recovered loot. NEDC budgets $6.7 billion for rebuilding of Northeast. Those are stories coming on the front page of the leadership this morning. All right, away from the leadership, we look at the nation newspaper this morning. The banner caption reads, government to fund 
petrol subsidy with 3 trillion naira in one year and the Federal Executive Council okays 2.55 trillion naira supplementary budget. Presidency will borrow to meet obligation. Rivers falls ex-commissioner's defense on dumped plane and Son Wolu will deliver Okbebi or Jota Bridge next year. You also have the 2023 Saraki Okorcha six presidential ticket. Fayoshi's man, Kola Wale, is a Kiti PDP candidate. And uh, APC adopts direct primaries to pick a Kiti candidate. Uh, this is some of the headlines you find on the Nation newspaper this morning. Indeed, it was it was a back to back um, um, action as far as I see. Ikiti PDP Guba primary was concerned. I'm sure Mr. Tuku can't wait to talk about it. Let's go over to the Punch newspaper this morning, and of course, these headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper: Governors NLC doubt fuel consumption, NNPC demands a three trillion naira for subsidy. Uh, with the following writers to that uh, story, or to that headline rather, there is a lot of fraud in consumption and distribution figures fire me. Uh, reps raise 28 member panels to probe daily fuel consumption refineries. And the last writer to that headline, Nigeria risks bankruptcy as fuel subsidy continues. Experts warn FG. Really, really a worrying. Uh, also on the front page of the Punch newspaper, PDP primaries 150. 150 political thugs arrest raises tension. Fire Shea's candidate clinches governorship ticket. Wiki lied, claimed abandoned aircraft stolen in 2015. Wiki lied, claimed abandoned aircraft stolen in 2015. This is coming from the current transportation minister, uh, former governor of um, River State. It's now a back and forth between the current governor and former governor over that uh, uh, so uh, allegedly abandoned plane in Germany. Alleged assault or sexual assault, Baba Ijesha drops no case submission, opens defense February 17. Okorcha plans world conference on presidential bid, uh, seeks senators' prayers. Okorcha plans, we should say, world press conference uh, on presidential bid, six, seeks senators' prayers. That story. Uh, can be found on page 13 of the Punch newspaper. Overwhelming majority of Igbo don't believe in secession. Oh, Hanese, that's quite interesting. Uh, overwhelming majority of Igbo don't believe in secession. Inspector killed fighting herdsmen attackers, uh, two bandits dead in Ogun Forest. And another one, finally, from the Punch newspaper. Uh, Keridolu alleges massive payroll fraud, vows sanctions against culprits. And those are the headlines coming on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Well, let's have Ezekiel Yai to uh, share his thoughts on the stories this morning. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. As always, I'm grateful. So I, I will start off with this one. <laughs> and uh, the Daily Independent newspaper, Constitution Review, Rep 6, creation of 111 additional seats for women. And you also have the fact that uh, recommend six more in state assembly across the entire federation and rejects state pleas despite insecurity challenges. I, I, I see some good in some of the things that they are trying to do. For instance, um, the representation of women in the National Assembly is not okay. It is not okay for more reasons than one. Uh, on, on the first instance, probably on the personal side, I've found women to be more trustworthy and they're more stable and more patriotic a lot of times. And the process of lawmaking needs people who are like level-headed, and think more of the larger good. And women, from my personal perspective, seem to have a better, a higher affinity to achieving such ends than the men. So when you go to the national, and their commitment value is usually on the very high side, and they're usually very, very good nationalists. That's what I've come to know about women. And I think it's actually right, because if you look at the countries around the world where they are led by women, indices show that they are much better governed than those led by men. I mean, that's, that's a proven statistics. I could name those countries, you know. Um, that is on one hand. So when it comes to Nigeria, the sort of politics we play, the money game, completely disenfranchises the women. So looking for an ingenious way to, to, to get the women to be on the ballot 
and to not just to be on the ballot because they are allowed to be on the ballot, but to win on the ballot. I, I think it's ingenious and uh, between you and I. And um, one talks again, uh, maybe a little side talk about, you know, the cost is so much, why do we want to increase the cost? I say, look, if you have a hundred naira and you have 10 people, they each go home with 20 naira. No, 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 10 naira, okay? If you increase the people to 20 and bring the take home to 10, you've had the take home to 5. You still have the 100 naira you are paying, but now you have 20 people instead of 10 people sharing that same 100 naira. I believe that the take home of the National Assembly members needs to be honestly looked into to the end that even if we increase the numbers to accommodate the women, we don't need to pay more. All we need to do is to say, guys, you've got to take less and let's have the women in it. And any, any National Assembly member that will oppose that is, is, um, is somebody that will need to look into very well. So on that score, I believe that, that a good point is being made. The women should be given a little consideration and um, so that they come in on board where there are too many men in that National Assembly. Uh, we need a lot more women. So to that extent, I agree with him. Or I agree, yes, I agree with the National Assembly. In the area of um, state police that they are rejecting, I don't agree with them. Every policing is local. There's something I put up called the National Eye. You realize that at the end of the day, the security of Nigeria is not in the hands of the police or in the military. It's in the hands of the people. And the sooner we get into that mode, that mentality, the earlier it would be for us to achieve national security because we are thinking too much of security in the wrong direction. You know, we talk in terms of state policing and we go down to municipal policing or local government. In fact, we need to get down to the ward level and then we change the mentality from the first angle to the involvement of the people, to the synergy between the people, bringing in even the traditional rulers and even every village head, giving them a responsibility. The moment the people own the security apparatus, just relying on the, 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 the security agencies as, as instruments that they network and layers with, that will be the beginning of security in Nigeria. I have such a template that is very, 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 very unconventional, but is the way forward. So to that extent, we need not just state policing, we need municipal or local government and ward policing in a completely different mindset from what we are having today. Thank you very much. Uh, interesting. Uh, I, I would love to look at your template, Mr. Ezekiel. Let, let's, let's stay with the independent, uh, daily independent newspaper. And of course, last night, um, the eyes of some Nigerians who were interested in the political happenings were locked on um, Adoikiti. Um, of course, with our governor, Emmanuel Odom, uh, superintending over that Ikiti PDP Cuba primary. Um, it was a lot of huff and puff from last week with the uh, leading contenders you know, apart from one of them going on a protest, saying that um, uh, the primary was being hijacked by a former governor of Ikiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe. Well, Fayoshe himself, being a delegate uh, and a member of the PDP, was in the building at the primary center yesterday, and his anointed candidate, B.C. Kolawole, emerged as the winner of that Ikiti PDP guba. Um, Senator Abiodun Olujimi herself, one of the leading contenders, had submitted a letter withdrawing from that race, citing the fact that um, she was being disenfranchised. But uh, Shegoni was still there. Um, he was beaten uh, by a wide margin, a wide gap, uh, by um, uh, BC, um, of course, uh, Kola Wale BC, who was, who was a preferred candidate of Wai What do you say to this? Um, what is this? What's your thought on the, uh, the development and the emergence of Kola Wale as the flag bearer of the PDP? Yeah, the, the, the very first thing is that I have a personal, do I say I have a personal issue or he has a personal issue with me talking about um, my brother Fayoshe, because in 2007, I contested and he told me that the only reason I lost was because I refused to involve him and make him my campaign uh, manager. That was just on the lighter side. We're just okay. talking about our friends. But let me tell you the simple truth. Like him or hate him, you cannot 
dismiss Mr. Fireshay with a wave of the hand. You can't. And he has established himself without any iota of doubt that he has good grasp, grip, and control over the politics of AKT. Uh, it's not surprising that the result went that way because long before then, you know, he was, um, I think he was on your station or one of the stations where he just made it very clear, look, this is, is a game of numbers and I've got the numbers. He said it very well. He said he's got about 60, 70% of the numbers and he told you how he had it. So I think that what has played out in equity politics is something that was just expected. And um, I, I think the love of uh, fire share is the beginning of um, election um, you know, uh, success. I don't know to what extent he's going to translate that to go beyond the party into the state for general elections. But I think that he, he plays his game well. He seems to be somebody that is pretty loved. But it's for a kitty people to decide exactly what they want. The issue is now that we are going through with the primaries, I want the smaller parties to bring up extremely credible candidates so that the conversation, like we are changing in Aquaibum, it moves from hashtag, you know, party to hashtag person, not party. So we now start to interrogate because today nobody's talking about APC at the center. They're talking Buari, Buari, Buari. And that's the fact. In Akwaibom, nobody's talking about PDP. They're talking of Governor Udom, Governor Udom, Governor Udom. So the mentality comes to the fact that it's about the person and not the party. So I'm looking for an extremely credible candidate to pick a ticket on one of the parties and then run that hashtag person, not party, and see if a kitty people would rather go for party or for a person that will liberate them. I really look forward yeah. to that conversation. Yeah, to, in you know, but, 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 but the, the, the issue, you know, because of course there was a video circulating on social media showing, you know, members of the PDP um, going at each other with blows. Even the DSS officials at the venue had to try to separate them and they also got involved in the fiscuffs. Um, there, there's been a complaint of, of a doctored delegates list you know, by the other aspirants um, in that primary. They are saying that the list of delegates was doctored. Biodo Olujimi in her complaint said that she could not even muster her own delegates from her own area. The things were taken out of her hands. And if we, we, we check, you know, you go online, some of the videos circulating show delegates showing their ballot paper to fire. She was seated there. He was there with a pen and, of course, a notepad. Of course, he, he'll be expected he wants to write the results. But it's, it, it's in color, full color. Delegates who went to him to show him their, how they voted. They showed him the ballot paper. You know, so what do you say to this as far as internal democracy is concerned? The conversation around consensus, candidature, direct primaries or indirect. And we're looking at 2023, one credible candidate to emerge and everyone to have a chance. I'll tell you this, and I want Nigerians to listen and listen good. I was the pioneer national chairman of Young Democratic Party. What is going on is not a coincidence or an accident. It's a well-orchestrated, you know, mechanism that allows people in power to control power and retain power. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with free, fair, credible, transparent processes, whether it is direct or indirect, or consensus, is about the power block holding on to power. Why do I say this? Look at the constitution of each of the parties and see whether there are ambiguities in the processes of selecting. Which party tells you who makes the delegates list? There are two. One is statutory delegates, you know, appointees and, you know, several, you know, elected officers at say, several levels. And then those that you bring up through a, a election at the lower levels, the congresses and things like that. And those, those lists are so subjective. It's a power game. You know, I was the Ward and Local Government Congress Committee chairman of the PDP to one of the states. And that is where you get the structure of the party handed over to certain people. And you discover that the people in power don't do direct 
primaries the way people think. People standing on the line, being counted, that transparency, accountability, it's not there. It doesn't exist until the day, which is what I started as a national chairman of YDP, until the day where every party member is mandated to register electronically. He said, how about the villages? Are they not using ATM cards and POS in the villages? Forget that. They have no problem with electronics. They just know that that transparent process cannot be because the day it is, the power is removed from the power blocks and given to the people, and they won't stand that. We're looking for a party. I'm in the ADC, and the, yesterday at the BOT level, we actually sat down and talked and asked ourselves, why can't we be different? Why can't we do something that will energize Nigerians to know they have a credible alternative? And from what we came out at the board level yesterday, I think Nigerians should look forward to something exciting from the African Democratic Congress, which is the ADC. Okay, so uh, Ezeka Yaito, let's move away from that now and look at the Nation newspaper uh, where government is to fund petrol subsidy with 3 trillion naira in one year. Uh, that's what you find. And the fact that the ex uh, Federal Executive Council, that's the FEC, uh, okays 2.55 trillion naira supplementary budget. Uh, presidency says it will borrow to fund the obligation. What are your thoughts on this one? My thoughts on this one are so complicated that I pray God gives me the capacity to unpack what's on my mind. Because this issue of subsidy, I want to tell Nigerians that we should just, let me come with that word that we don't like to hear a lot of time. We just pray that God takes us through this administration, number one. Number two, that we make up our minds that this APC PDP never again Number three, that a credible third force emerges that works on transparency, accountability, and nationalism. The reason is this. When you sit down and interrogate this issue of subsidy, it's one of those, one of those very, very well-doctored, manipulated, and controlled construct. Okay? It's very well-doctored, very well-manipulated, very well-controlled. This confusion is not, is, not, is not happening by accident or coincidence. I always tell you something. If you have a 1,000 blocks and you stack them in modes of 50, do you understand me? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Do you understand me? And they are well stacked. Within three minutes, you can count a 1,000 blocks carefully. But if you have just 100 blocks, and you just scatter them all over the floor. When you, they say, no, you've counted this one. No, you have not counted this one before. Oh, yes, you've counted 100 blocks. We one hour, you have not finished counting 100 blocks for everybody to agree that this is 100 blocks. Why is it so difficult for us to know the volume of consumption of PMS or petrol in this country? What is rocket science in it? Why is it so difficult to do that? Number two, what is really the landed cost of petrol? What are the plus plus that takes it to, you know, you know the, 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 the cost of petrol doubles when even in the international market, the price has not doubled. So the question is, you can't say, oh, the international benchmark, you know, the price of crude has gone up. The, the, the percentage difference just has no relevance with the cost of petrol in Nigeria. Why is that so? Number three, what is the rocket science in fixing refineries? I know, and I can tell you without batting an eyelid that if I want to construct a certain type of building within an hour, I can tell you the specialists in that area not just because I'm an architect and in area in every area we have professionals, but because the social, the, 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 the internet makes certain information available to you in your bedroom. So you look at one, two, three best practices. You call them, even if it means paying them to come and profile what you've got and profile solution. So within one month, 
month, within two months, within six months, you can know the real situation and the real solution. So the next question is taking an informed decision. But this government has been on the seat for over six years trying to unravel how to fix the refineries. We've all agreed that refining a product in-house, at home, is a solution. We've all agreed. Now, if before President Buhari came in, he said that subsidy was fraud, to the best of my knowledge, and he comes in, one expected that for such a fraud of such gargantuan financial implication, three trillion in one year, three trillion in one year, is not something as a president, is your first priority, number one priority. Because you fix that, it will have implication on security. So you cannot in six years know what it would take you to fix the refineries. Doesn't make sense. Okay. All right. You see, this thing is, I'll, I'll end on this note because there's so much on it. We can still go back on it. I'll tell you this. These people need in my opinion, this money to fund the election. There's nothing as sweet in fraud as big volume of money coming in under shrouded circumstances. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, um, let, let's see how that plays out. We will definitely have some more time um, to, to talk about this. Let's move still, stay uh, with the nation newspaper, Mr. Etuk, and um, uh, let's look at uh, what's happening um, as far as a 2023 20, uh, presidential race is concerned. And if you look at the top right corner of the front page of the uh, nation newspaper, we have a new name or some new names uh, joining the presidential free, even though the supporters of Bola Metin were claiming that he um, opened the floodgates as if that's an, uh, an achievement. But um, 2023, Saraki Okoracha to seek presidential ticket. We expect uh, what uh, Okoracha is calling a world press conference uh, to be held in a matter of days. Your thoughts on this? <clears throat> two things I want us to I, I, you see I have how do I put this I'm a friend of the mainstream media but I'm starting to have a very major problem a very major problem with the mainstream media that, that giving us that animation that Nigeria has two choices. Everything you want to do is PDP, APC, PDP, APC, PDP, APC. It's a construct that is not in our best interest as a people. I'll give you a very simple answer, um, illustration. There is a man called Professor Kingsley Mohalu. He declared for presidency long time ago. There's another man called uh, Bola Ahmed, um, 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 Obong Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and he's just declared. The media is falling head over heels over him. But I want to ask a question. Just assume that these two people are appearing before a corporate board on choosing a CEO for a corporate institution called Nigeria. Please tell me who amongst the two, the criteria, talking in terms of character, talking in terms of competence, talking in terms of capability, talking in terms of, uh, you know, all these things put together. Not to talk in terms of the, the sentiment factor. I want to put that aside. Are you honestly telling me that Professor Kingsley Mohalu will look at like a Boy Scout in terms of competence to run a country. You see, there is politics, there is governance. And I expect the mainstream media to run a narrative on politics and governance and let Nigerians start to change the conversation and bring in competence. Mm. 
in defense of in defense of the media, um, <laughs> Mr. Yet, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> but in defense of the media, um, I mean, we, we don't we don't we don't take sides. I'm sure you know. We just give people the no, news. No, 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 and, no, and, no, and, and, no. And, and we, 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 we could say that that we we're not trying to ship any narrative as far as any of the candidates is concerned we're just giving people the news and who is the news maker no, I'll uh, tell uh, you uh, who is I'll the news tell maker you. between mogalu and um uh, Tinubu? you tell me sir who is it who who I'll will turn you. the I'll tell you. who will turn I'll the biggest you. heads i'll tell you your biggest responsibility which is captured in the constitution yeah is to be the fourth estate of the realm that's your biggest responsibility, which is captured in, you are actually captured in the constitution. So what do you do? But well, we, you know, we, we can't be telling the public who to no, vote I'm for. No, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, brother. This one, Namia, and you, Ross. You know what? <laughs> what? What you do, what you owe this country in the constitution is narratives on good governance. So what you do is, is not who is more popular, who is more, is like the, the, the narrative here is on good governance. Nigerians, who will be a better CEO? They're not taking sides, but you are driving a narrative which is not on who has more capacity. Capacity does not help Nigeria. Competence helps Nigeria. So the media narrative should be who is more competent? And they sit on that line of competence and they drive so that the conversation becomes competence, competence, capacity, character, competence, capacity, character. My brother, if the media runs that narrative within a few months, many people who want to contest will go back with all the money they put together. Today, even if... <clears throat> Dangote becomes the president of Nigeria. Look at Donald Trump. The day you become the president, your money becomes irrelevant. What is between your ears becomes what is needed for the office. Nigeria does not need capacity. In terms of financial, you know, political sagacity, they need that, that, that character, that competence, the CEO. Look at, look, we, we need a coach. When you are going to, to take a coach, you are not looking at how rich he is in terms of financial capacity. You are looking at his technical capacity, technical ability, fit for purpose. Can the media start to drive fit for purpose narrative? That's your job. That's actually but, your constitutional yes, assignment. Sir, we have to move on. We have to move on. But but can you can you blame the media for simply reporting what's happening? You know, I've yes, asked, I if, can, if I ask you, I, if I ask you, sir, if I ask you, sir, sorry, sir, if I were to ask you, what news um, has Mogalu made in the past one or two weeks? Can you can you tell me? Chinubu went, you know, up north visiting, you know, some some political godfathers and all that. Tinubu made a statement saying, uh, uh, you know, you need to go and get your PVC renewed because it's expiring. Um, you have him meeting a lot of uh, groups, they're holding events in Lagos, in Abuja, and other parts of the country. And then the, the APC is the ruling party right now. And the intrigues in the APC with his political protege, Emil Sibaj, also making a run for, um, for the presidency and putting him on sort of a, a, a collision course. You don't know what's going on between both men. This is a news item. These are stories. And people are making statements about yeah, that. Nobody is talking about Buhali for now. He hasn't made any news. And our, our responsibility is to re report. I so. agree. That is because our perspective is in the wrong narrative. You want a coach for the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and you're telling me about his family, he's going there, he's done this. If the narrative is on competence, character, capacity, capability, we will be running narratives on Mohalu's you know, capacity. Whether he speaks or he does not speak, we are looking, interrogating him, my brother, let me say this. The day that, say, Tinubu becomes a president, if it pleases God and his soul, so that day, visiting Kano, talking about this, become irrelevant. And we have become the poverty capital of the world. The decisions that are being taken are, 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 are emasculating the people. We are dying. We, what we should be asking us, who is that sojourn? We should even be going around 
and bringing out the different surgeons. Who is that coach? We should be going around bringing out the best coach. The richest coach is not necessarily the best coach for a country. Now Nigeria has become the poverty capital of the world. We're having problems, mega problems. So our narrative cannot be, oh, the man is making news. That cannot be our narrative, brother. You know that. It cannot be the man is making news. We want to know this man that is coming. Even the media owes us the duty of interrogation of, oh boy, this man, where they come, oh, the man get plenty of money. Oh, do we need this man? Is he the person for us? Will he make it us better? Will he make that should be the, the, the media narrative? Why I say this is because I am a product of the media to a great extent. I've enjoyed the goodwill of the media. I have, I have, I am known today nationally, internationally, because of how favorably disposed the media is to me. So I, I'm a friend of the media, but the right. time has come when we've okay. got to call ourselves to order and say we owe this nation to drive a narrative of good governance and not right, of capacity and to, we have to I'm sure you know where I'm coming from. Time. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We really do appreciate your time and it's always inspiring, I mean, listening to you. Uh, we look forward to more of this time. Thank you. God bless you all. And that's the size of it for Off the Press. We will return with the major conversation looking at the deductions from uh, the Federation account to form the Free Trust Fund. And uh, before that, let's tell you what happened today in history. Okay.